Welcome guys, I am Harriet, and you're watching EV News on Jexton Electric. In this edition, we gonna be focusing on Tesla news and updates. Click subscribe and the bell icon, so you don't miss out on our next edition. Tesla Vision Model Y has passed the final stages of safety testing, achieving the highest overall score under the latest Euro NCAP protocol, the most stringent ever. This result can be considered a test of Tesla Vision. Tests have shown the Model Y to be incredibly safe, even without radar. Safety ratings for the Tesla Vision Model Y are published by the European New Car Assessment Programme, Euro NCAP, and the Australian New Car Assessment Programme, ANCAP. According to a Euro NCAP press release, the Model Y unit used in safety testing was manufactured at the Gigafactory in Berlin. Overall, the Model Y was near perfect with an adult occupant protection rating of 97%. Child occupant protection rating of 89%. Vulnerable road user protection rating of 82%. And safety rating of 98%. The Model Y's 98% score in the Euro NCAP safety assistance category is particularly impressive as it relates to its ability to use the Tesla Vision system without radar. In fact, the Model Y's safety rating is the highest of any vehicle ever tested by Euro NCAP. Overall, the Model Y safety test results prove one thing, vehicles with Tesla Vision are just as safe, if not safer, than other vehicles on the road today. Let's look at highlights of the testing. Tesla FSD beta tester makes an ironic imitation video of Dan O'Dowd's anti-FSD ad. Tesla Model 3 owner and FSD beta tester, John Herity, filmed an ironic imitation video of Dan O'Dowd's anti-FSD ad, which claimed the advanced driver assistance systems would arbitrarily knock down kids. But it ended up that the ironic imitation video was actually accurate. Let's take a look. Elon Musk says Tesla's full self-driving software is amazing. It will blow your mind. But does it work? This happens over and over again. 100,000 Tesla drivers are already using full self-driving on public roads. I'm John Herity. I'm an automation engineer, and Tesla's full self-driving beta software is one of the best commercial softwares I've ever seen. Now, let's look at upcoming features for the Model Y and all Tesla cars. Recent Tesla mobile app update suggests the automaker is considering adding a powered frunk to its vehicles. Making it more interesting, Tesla added a close animation to the frunk, indicating powered frunks are coming soon. In the previous version of the app, version 4.11.2, there was only an open animation, Tapping the front quick action button again didn't close it. Here is a release of the latest version 4.12 from Tesla via Not a Tesla app. You will no longer be asked to confirm if you want to open the front when opening it through the app. The front will now open immediately without confirmation. If you have an automated trunk that has the ability to close itself, the app will no longer ask for a confirmation as well. However, if your trunk is manual, then you will still be asked whether you're sure that you want to open the trunk and that you will need to close it manually once it's open. Next feature, Elon Musk hinted on Twitter that Tesla will add the ability to automatically adjust each driver's side mirrors. The tweet was in response to a question from Twitter user James Stevenson, he asked the CEO directly, hey, 
or Elon Musk, will Teslas ever be able to automatically adjust the side mirror settings for new drivers? Based on 3D position of the driver's eyes, plus comparing against the fleet's internal camera data and side mirror settings. Musk responded, yes, but side mirrors won't be needed in a self-driving future. That said, we will add auto configure to side mirrors. CEO Elon Musk noted that the mirrors cause about a 5% reduction in highway range, which is probably why he wants to eliminate them in a fully autonomous future. Tesla's side mirrors currently have auto tilt, auto fold, and auto dimming, so automatic configuration seems like the logical next step. Tesla vehicles will be integrated with SpaceX Starlink to eliminate dead zones worldwide in the future. On August 25th at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, Musk and T-Mobile CEO and President Mike Suet announced a major partnership between Starlink and T-Mobile with the goal of eliminating dead zones worldwide. The project, titled Coverage Above and Beyond, will go into beta for SMS, MMS, and select messaging apps late next year. Musk tweeted, Starlink V2, launching next year, will transmit direct to mobile phones, eliminating dead zones worldwide. Musk posted a follow-up tweet saying, Note, connectivity will be 2 to 4 megabits per cell zone, so will work great for texting and voice calls, but not high bandwidth. Unfortunately, watching high-definition videos on YouTube or Netflix or sending high-quality images at this speed is not ideal. Hopefully T-Mobile and Starlink will continue to increase these speeds, as hardware and software improve to provide more bandwidth. To enable mobile service in remote and rural areas, Starlink will use a portion of T-Mobile's mid-band PCS spectrum to eliminate dead zones around the world. Tesla's navigation system is already one of the best in the market, but the electric car maker is known for improving already improved vehicle features. One of these improvements could be the addition of an alternative route feature that could give drivers more options when traveling to a destination. Tesla already has a sophisticated navigation system that shows preferred routes, but not a Tesla app points out that the electric car maker is set to add another alternative route to its US navigation system. It remains to be seen if the 2022.28 update will add alternative routes to regions outside the United States. Here is what Tesla said in its release note 2022.28.1 via not a Tesla app. View up to three routes when navigating to a destination. Quickly compare the total travel time and traffic information for each route. Note, traffic information is only displayed with premium connectivity. Tesla is introducing the ability to minimize the theater feature in software update 2022.28, so drivers can access other features without having to completely close the app. Reported by Not A Tesla App, the Tesla theater is one of the most useful features of the company's electric vehicles, because you can have fun while idling on the street or while charging. Tesla theater allows owners to watch YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus and other streaming services when the vehicle is not in motion. Here's what Tesla says in its release notes, full screen theater mode can now be minimized, allowing access to vehicle controls without video playback interruption. Tap the minimize button on the top left corner of the window to toggle full screen mode. Tesla has not yet started rolling out the new software that will allow owners to minimize the theater. However, it is expected to roll out to some owners in the coming weeks. Last feature, according to Tesla Hacker A Green The Only, Tesla is expected to support external storage for games in an upcoming software update. Teslas already support an external drive for storing dashcam and sentry mode footage, as well as local music files. It looks like Tesla may soon be able to support games on an external drive as well. This news follows Elon Musk, who said Tesla is working on making Steam games playable in cars and will show a demo of their progress, he said last month. Tesla's internal hard drive is divided into several partitions, one of which is dedicated exclusively to Tesla Arcade. The size of a Tesla's internal drive varies by model and MCU version. 
The smallest drive comes with MCU1 of 8GB and an additional SD card used for maps. However, not many games for MCU1 vehicles are supported, and Steam games for MCU1 vehicles are not expected to be available. MCU2 equipped Teslas have a 64GB drive, and would probably benefit the most from an external drive, as MCU3 vehicles contain much larger drives, up to 256GB NVMe drives, depending on the model and year. New charging curve technology can reduce the charging time of Tesla supercharger by up to 60%. According to New Scientist, research from the Idaho National Laboratory proves this new technology can charge an electric vehicle battery, from 0 to 90% in 10 minutes. Only a simple software change is required, which will allow automakers to implement improvements without physically changing the battery chemistry of the battery management system. The real question is whether automakers will adopt this technology, or the other technologies announced last month at the American Chemical Society meeting. Neither the researchers, nor the Idaho National Laboratory has revealed whether any battery or car manufacturers are working to implement this game-changing technology. Tesla is preparing to launch a supercharger pole platform that will allow owners to decide on future supercharger locations. At the 2022 shareholder meeting called the Cyber Roundup, CEO Elon Musk said the automaker is positioning its next supercharger based on where the company sees the greatest impact. However, viewers were not necessarily ecstatic about the process, and felt that owners should have more say in future supercharging locations. Musk said, maybe we should do an online poll, for where should we put supercharges? Yeah, let's do that. Now, Tesla is gearing up for the launch of its supercharger pole platform, prompting owners to recommend locations on Twitter. The locations with the most votes will be included in the final vote. They tweeted, supercharger voting coming soon. Reply with location suggestions. Replies with the most likes will be included in the poll. Voting has not officially started, and Tesla has not indicated when it will begin voting. The first solar-powered Tesla V4 supercharger station could be in Yuma County, Arizona. This is one of the first known V4 supercharger stations in North America. Arizona's V4 supercharger station is near the Dateland Visitor Center on Interstate 8. According to Tesla supercharger enthusiast Marco R.P. Tesla on Twitter, 40 stalls will be installed, two stalls are ADA accessible, one for vehicles with trailers. Adding a stall just for trailer would probably be appreciated, as it would reduce the headaches for drivers, charging at the same location. Tesla is also building two solar arrays, spanning 4,500 square feet, on the premises. The solar canopy will cover at least 40 supercharger stalls. Tesla also plans to place a mega pack on the site. The V4 charger stalls will be tuned to 250 kilowatts, as it appears to be optimized to serve non-Tesla vehicles too as well. If Tesla's new supercharger can provide consistent fast charging even for non-Tesla vehicles, it would go a long way toward proving that electric vehicles are indeed a viable alternative to internal combustion engines. EV tax credit under review, after South Korea submitted an official complaint. In particular, the incentive system requires the car to be assembled in the United States. Ultimately, the regulations will also require that more and more battery materials and components be of domestic origin in order to qualify for tax credit. And one company that has been particularly affected by these rules is Hyundai or Kia Motors. The South Korean automaker currently does not have an electric vehicle production plant in the United States, and the first capable will open in 2025. The United States plans to revise changes to incentives for electric vehicles after a security meeting between the United States, South Korea and Japan in Hawaii on Thursday, Reuters reported. Not sure if this review will lead to policy changes. However, despite this review, the US may not be off the hook yet. South Korean officials have gone so far as to say the new electric vehicle incentive structure violates bilateral free trade agreements between the two countries, 
and may file an official complaint with the United Nations or the World Economic Forum. Tesla is evaluating the possibility of building a lithium battery recycling plant in Texas. The company appears to be willing to actively support its battery manufacturing efforts. Bloomberg has found documents showing that Tesla has applied for tax credits with the Texas State Board of Audit. According to official documents, Tesla isn't just looking to purify lithium hydroxide. Tesla also plans to build facilities to support processing, refining and production of other battery materials and ancillary manufacturing operations. Tesla said its lithium hydroxide battery processing plant will process the ore to make it ready for use in battery production. The company appears to have developed an innovative cleaning process that uses less harmful chemicals than traditional methods. Tesla is considering building a lithium processing plant in Nooses County, Texas. If Tesla chooses the Texas site, Tesla plans to begin construction on the refinery in the fourth quarter of 2022. The company expects the facility to be in commercial operation by the fourth quarter of 2024. Tesla supplier, CATL, announces new battery with 430 mile range. At the World New Energy Vehicle Conference in Beijing last week, Zheng Yukon, chairman of Tesla's battery supplier, CATL, discussed the company's new M3P batteries. CATL expects the energy density of M3P batteries to increase by 10% to 20%. With M3P batteries, CATL can increase the range of an electric vehicle to 700 km or 430 miles. The M3P battery will be made of new materials, and CATL said the cost of the battery will be lower, compared to nickel and cobalt batteries. CATL aims to increase its lead over competitors, such as LG Energy Solutions and BYD. M3P batteries can help the Chinese battery supplier achieve its goals. Tesla Giga Nevada exceeds 6,500 Powerwalls per week aims to produce 442 megapacks in Q3. A recent meeting with Tesla employees revealed that Gigafactory Nevada is making big strides in making the company's battery storage products, such as Powerwall and Megapack. New Vice President Hershikesh Sagar held a meeting with hundreds of Gigafactory employees on Thursday. During the meeting, whose audio and documents were leaked to CNBC, Sagar and other Tesla executives discussed management changes, factory milestones, and some ambitious goals for Tesla's facilities. During their discussion on Powerwall production, they noted, Powerwall production in Gigafactory Nevada is hitting its stride, with the facility exceeding 6,500 units of the residential battery system per week. Montgomery noted that Giga Nevada produced 37,600 Powerwalls in Q2 2022, and this is poised to increase by 22% in Q3 2022. Reddick, for his part, noted that Tesla is on target to produce 442 megapack batteries for the third quarter. If successful, this would represent an 85% growth in megapack production compared to the previous quarter. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please support us by subscribing to help us grow and also be part of our community here at Jexton Electric Channel as we have a mission to take the charge of fighting against climate change by bringing the future of sustainable energy closer to our viewers and subscribers, showing that electric cars are the best cars in the world. For more news and update on EVs, subscribe to this channel. See you on our next EV News Edition.